What's up everyone? Welcome back to another C10 video. I haven't gotten quite as far along as I'd like to. Um, what you're seeing here is roughly about 20 hours worth of sanding. Um, I know it sounds like a lot, but if you want to do this right, it takes a lot of time. This is the worst part of the whole body process in my opinion, and it sucks. <laughs> Let's it's just put it honestly, um, but it's worth it in the end. So it's worth spending the time to do it right the first time. In the end, you end up with a great project, uh, product, project, whatever you want to say. Um, in this video though, I kind of want to go over the progress so far of the truck cab here and also had a few people comment some really good questions and I kind of want to address those too in the video. So I'm going to do that as well. So I guess first, um, let's address the comments. Um, one comment was, where do I get my body panels from? And Again, I want to remind everybody I am not sponsored in any way. So when I tell you I use something, it's because I truly think it's the best or it's the best that I've found to date. So uh, that's what I use. Um, anyway, with the body panels for the last couple of years, I've been getting all my uh, panels, sheet metal from Auto Metal Direct in Georgia. They are, from what I've found, about the most accurate reproductions on the market today. The sheet metal thickness is at least as thick as the original panels, maybe just slightly thicker. So they put out a really good product. Um, some of the stuff they actually make and stamp their own name on it. And a lot of stuff they sell is from other distributors, but what they have, it fits really well. And so far with everything that you see on the truck, uh, it's fit awesome and on the cab here specifically what I did on it it wasn't a lot but it was just uh, in and out of rockers and the cab corners and the outer rocker panels I mean when I say they fit perfectly they really did I mean I took the old ones off and literally the new ones slid right in place the old ones didn't have to modify anything everything went together great um, the whole bed, as you guys know, is uh, aftermarket and again, auto metal direct and then the front fenders were auto metal direct as well. The, the rest, uh, the doors, the cab and the hood is all the original sheet metal to the truck. Um, I will say on another project of mine, the, you may have seen it in the other video, the 70 Chevelle. It needed quite a bit of work too, and I got most of my stuff on it actually from OPGI in Southern California until I needed a rocker panel for it. I needed the outer rocker, and the one I got from OPGI just, it wasn't stamped the same, and it just didn't fit right. And that's when I first went to Auto Metal Direct, had them send me a rocker, and I was amazed. Every single little dimple that was in the factory rocker was in that rocker panel from Auto Metal Direct. It was a perfect fit, and ever since then, I've been using them. So, again, that's where I get my sheet metal from, if that helps answer your questions. And then uh, the other one that I wanted to go over is when I'm sanding on the cab here, um, obviously on the flat spots, you know, I use a block, but what do you do on the curve sides? You know, there, this has a lot of compound curves and angles and, you know, block doesn't really work for that. So how do I sand it? And I'll show you guys how I do that in just a minute. First off, I'll show you guys the, the progress that I've been made on it. Um, again, so the firewall is almost done. And if you see yellow tape on it, those are little spots that I do need to fix a few imperfections before I go into final primer. This panel here, the, the, the firewall area, the cowl area, I'm not going to sand this time around. I'm just going to mask it off because I'm going to be shooting this and the rest of it in primer. And I don't want to do two coats of primer on this because this whole area you don't see. It's This is behind the fenders and the cowl panel covers this area. So you don't really see any of this. So it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be somewhat smooth and painted black. So I'm only gonna do one sanding on this part and I'll wait to do that last before I actually put it in paint. So 
um, a little bit of the bottoms still to sand on the firewall. I have to cover up a few pinholes in this area from some of the body filler. The inside is completely done and it's ready for paint. Um, I've gotten the inside as smooth as I need it or want it and it is all done. So inside's ready for paint. I will not be shooting this again, except for there's a couple little spots. So you can see right there, a little nick where I cut this out. I need to fix two little spots there, but no biggie. I'll fix those and be ready for paint. The top of the cab is sanded. Door jam is sanded except for about a quarter of it. I need to finish this side. Cab corner sanded. The back is all sanded except for this last little area. And I still have to do this area of the cab and one more door jam. So I will probably have close to 25 hours in this and then probably another 15 or so the next time around when I prime the cab again in the areas that I need to, which it's basically gonna be the, the pillars on the outside, the top of the cab, the back of the cab, cab corners and the jams will be reprimed again and resanded. So that's progress. And now I'm gonna show you guys how that I do sanding on say all of these compound curves. And I will give you guys a warning. Uh, if you sand with gloves on, that's one thing. I would prefer to do my sanding without rubber gloves. It's about the only time I don't use rubber gloves. And I recommend doing something like this to your fingertips because unless you have really rough hands, you do as much sanding as this, you will cut through with your sandpaper and uh, you might make yourself bleed a little bit. So I put a little bit of athletic tape on there to help protect my fingers from the sandpaper. And then, what I do is, this is gonna be 320 grit. I basically take my sandpaper about that big, fold it in half so I have two sides. One, and it basically just helps so you can grip it a little bit easier. If you have a sandpaper backing on one side, the sandpaper won't slip as well. So that's about the size of sandpaper I have. And then spray bottle with just water in it. Try and do this while filming to show you guys, but you want your sandpaper to be wet and you want your surface to be wet and you want to do this quite frequently to keep your sandpaper from clogging up. And basically, I just hold my sandpaper with my fingertips like this and you want to go, keep it moving. You want to go in multiple directions and you just want to keep the sandpaper moving. You don't want to stop in one spot. And the key here is just lots and lots of water on the sandpaper. Some guys like to just keep a hose running. That's fine too. I personally don't like to. It's just too much water and makes a watery mess everywhere. This way is a little bit less messy. But again, just keep, keep your sandpaper wet and keep your surface wet and just keep moving that sandpaper. And that's why you have the guide coat because it will tell you when you need to stop sanding. And if you're sanding just one spot, sand, 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 you'll end up with a dip. So that's why you just wanna keep sanding all over your guide coat so you can have a nice even surface. Just keep your sandpaper moving. And that is the best method that I have found for sanding out or wet sanding a project on an area like this where it's got a lot of corners. I like to do kind of a crisscross pattern back and forth. Kind of like when you sand with a block, you kind of want to do 90 degrees to each other.
And then if you feel with your hand, um, some people like to use your fingertips, some like to use the palm of their hand, but if you just feel with your hand, you can actually feel if there's any high or low spots and that should tell you how well of a job you're doing. So, so anyway, hopefully that answers two of the questions. Basically, how do I wet sand the corners and uh, what do I use for the, the sheet metal panels for my projects? So there you go, there you have it. Uh, again, if you guys have any other comments or questions, definitely let me know. Um, I'll try and get back with you either in the comments section or I will answer them in videos like this. So this thing will be ready for that second coat of primer very soon and I will get it masked up and get it shot with another coat of primer and in the next video that will happen. So sorry guys, don't have a lot for you this time, but you know, a little bit is better than nothing. So thanks again for watching everyone. Till next time, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> see you later.